I mean, look at this. The Rust-written Linux scheduler apparently is showing better game performance. I mean, <laughs> unfortunately, gaming on Linux, like, kind of a pipe dream. But, okay, I know there's going to be so many people like, oh, 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 I game all the time on Linux. I game all the time. It's so great. I don't even know. Steam Deck, people. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I, I hope that Linux becomes great for... For gaming, that'd be great. A canonical engineer has been experimenting with implementing a Linux schedule written within the Rust programming language. His early results are interesting and hopeful around some potential, uh, the potential of Rust-based scheduler that works via Sketch-Ext for implementing a scheduler using eBPF that can be loaded during runtime. Okay. I wonder how complete it is. Interesting, though. Well, I mean, this is very, very interesting. Uh, let's see. Uh, Andre, uh, who is a Linux kernel engineer at Ubuntu, Maker Canonical tweeted that he has been experimenting with a Rust schedule. I ended up writing a Linux uh, scheduler in Rust using a SkedgeX during Christmas break just for fun. I'm pretty shocked to see that it doesn't just work, but it can even outperform the default Linux scheduler with certain workloads, i.e. gaming. That's really interesting. I wonder what it does differently. Right? What does it do differently that causes it to actually perform different? Is it because it's not as complete, or is it actually because it is like genuinely better? Because I can't imagine that Rust by itself is somehow better than C. Rust magic. I don't believe in Rust magic because at the end of the day, it still has to get compiled. It's still it's like still being compiled. Less defensive. That could be true. I could buy. I could buy that. <laughs> yeah, a scheduler written in Rust for fun during Christmas break for Linux. He is the alpha of the alphas. Let's watch it. I want to watch this. All right. Okay, okay. Holy, holy cow. This is very misleading. The test he did is run Terraria while compiling the kernel. Uh, the kernel. I can't tell other than the frame rate. I'm still a noob in Terraria. I've never played Terraria. Um, I'm just curious, like, why is it so, so much better? Right? W what makes it so much better? I mean, obviously, a super impressive project to be able to build in such a small amount of time. But why, like, what can be done in Rust that cannot be done in C? Yeah, I mean, it's quote-unquote doubled the performance, right? It's going from 28 to 30 frames per second to 60. I don't, just old code, lifetimes. I did not see the difference. Fearless concurrency. Well, you'll notice that uh, if, you, if, you, if you watch there, you can see a little frame rate counter. That's the point. Scheduling is about uh, managing multiple tasks, like compiling and playing. Yeah, I guess I don't really understand what was going on there, like what was making it better. So there was also, he was also compiling at the exact same time and then running it. I mean, if it's better, it's better. Like I, I'd be super impressed if it's better. I, I don't know if it's a fair apples apples comparison. I'd like to see something over the time of, of uh, like, I'd like to see it. Obviously you'd need a real competition going on here. Just showing it on some computer, running something and doing that. I'm not sure exactly how, scientific if you will that is uh you need to see it like i would actually be very curious at seeing it i can't look at the code i, I don't first off i don't know how linux schedulers work second off just looking at a bunch of lifetimes and traits like what are you, what are you gonna be like Ooh, look at that thing it has de tick a and tick b damn that's a double lifetime like no one's gonna we're not it's not like we're gonna get it uh scheduling using rust async yeah exactly but you are the expert in Rust. I'm first off. I wouldn't call myself a Rust expert. I'm pretty good at it. I know how to do traits and lifetimes and a good por portion of the things that are available. But that don't mean I I am good like great at it. Uh, Thirty to sixty doesn't mean it doubled. Fair is it fair? I don't know if that's fair. I'm not sure. I'd have to think about that. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what it says. It could just be purely a different scheduler altogether. Maybe it breaks things up faster or does things in a different ordering or a different way that allows for a game as simple as Terraria to be able to run. Bro got math wrong. Well, I don't know. I'd have to, I'd have to look at it. I don't see. Oh, 57 comments. Yeah, let's see the comments. All right. All right. Scheduler seems uh, to be hard to get right. Uh, given there's dozens and almost they all seem to be janky hackmate. So another one in the mix sounds good to me. <laughs> 
<laughs> Let's go. The problem with schedulers are, one, they need to be informed in intelligent decisions. No, we cannot put a neural net in there. Otherwise, 90% of the CPU would be spent running the neural net. <laughs> It's actually pretty funny. Sometimes they, uh, they need to predict the future. But Nostradamus wasn't a scheduler, of course. Uh, so we try to hack something that works uh, good when the hardware has plenty of resources available. Interesting. Okay. Is there anything in here that, let's see, wait a minute. Performance went from 25 to 60. I'd be more suspicious that something important is being overlooked here. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's probably a, a pretty good indicator that something, it's, it's incomplete. Uh, Let's see, am I not wrong uh, to think it's not surprising at all that someone can fart out some random scheduler that benchmarks better at certain workloads? <laughs> this guy, this guy came in hot. Let's see, let's see if there's anything that's good. Um, a perfect scheduler is, it prob is probably impossible to build. You need one that handles power savings slash performance profiles and low latency for soft, uh, real-time stuff, maximum bent, yeah, blah, 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 blah. My guess is that... I think I, I think everyone is kind of agreeing that it's 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 not complete until it can do everything, and once it can do everything, and then it's probably more interesting to see, and perhaps it's better under cer certain workloads, and maybe it's way worse under other workloads, right? Like may maybe it makes something else slower. You know, just like that person saying that 60 FPS doesn't mean it doubled. I didn't understand how that means that. Well, how about this one? What if the thing that was being compiled in the background slowed down by 50%? So all of a sudden, something that looks faster, something else is getting slower. You'd have to, you yeah, it's just giving the game more bandwidth, potentially, right? And so it's just like, what is, you know, what is the actual thing? Because maybe that one thing that's spawning 32 threads versus the game that's probably spawning like three or four threads, maybe the one that's with three or four and the one that's getting 32 are currently being weighted the same. So it's just getting more priority than it probably ever has. Or who, who knows what's actually happening underneath the hood? I mean, that's the problem with uh, with any of these type of measurements is that you need some way to to measure it that's that's more like holistic. Uh, a good example of this would be that if you could just throw the scheduler onto a server and all of your servers just perform twenty percent better, and they're all doing different ones, right? Like if Netflix could just turn on the you know the so called Rust scheduler, or Google could just turn it on, or any of the big companies that get billions of requests, and all of a sudden everyone's server just gets like twenty percent faster, one could probably say the scheduler is fantastic. But until you can just magically turn something on and see a vast array of different programming uh, models just get faster, like it's just hard for me to believe that it's real. Bun just has – so so if you're talking about Bun, Bun has really good integration with the uh, with the OS, right? That's something that, that – and when I say really good, what I mean is it has no historical requirements like Node does. Node has a huge number of things that it has to back – that that it that it has to maintain over many many years. So it just has a huge like just a, a lot more things. Now one could say why doesn't no just prioritize the fast path and then make it pretty comparable to Bun? I think they will see Node get pretty comparable to Bun, but Bun also just got to do a brand new implementation that's not as complete as Node. So of course it's significantly faster. Why doesn't Node just delete itself? If Node's so good, why didn't it make Electric Boogaloo? So I just don't feel like. Uh, just converted to Harpoon 2. I think Harpoon 2 is great. Uh, there's something I need to work on. Um, yeah, but when it comes to any of these, like, whenever you see something, like, just in, just a general rule of thumb, whenever you see something that's like, this thing is now 10 times faster or 5 times or 20% faster, generally I'm pretty skeptical because that is, like, a really big performance improvement. And likely there's one of two things that have happened. It's like a new write that's missing some features. Or B... The previous one has had so much legacy that it's actually just being held down or see the previous one was actually poorly written and a simple change to it will make it in parity with the new one. And by simple, I mean, there's simple and, you know, simple, but not easy. You know what I mean? Like, I don't think it'd be hard for, for node to be able to get, uh, some of their, some of their stuff better. Like one thing that really holds down node is they have a whole bunch of async utils for inspection. And all this async surrounding stuff to make it way faster or to make it to, to make it way more inspectable makes it terrifically slower. But Bun has none of it. So Bun doesn't have any 
it 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 there's no async inspection in nearly the same uh you know magnitude. Now maybe that has changed. That could have changed. Hey, I could be wrong. I am not saying that it hasn't changed in the last six months or whatever with Bun. But Bun had significantly less inspection around async stuff. So therefore, there's if you go profile a node application that's doing some async stuff, and you'll see a whole bunch of calls to like async, you know promises async something async there's a bunch of handling around it and you can do some inspections and all that and a lot of the um a lot of these like uh data dog and all that that does like run times of what's happening within your system are using those async hooks to hook in and actually measure your system in all these different kind of places whereas you just can't do that today in bun that i know of so it it can it, things can be de- deceivingly faster but that's because they just don't have as many features and maybe that's okay. Maybe you don't need those features. And if you don't need those features and you can automatically make something three times faster, maybe you should have the control to turn those off and thus become faster. Yeah, Bun's missing a lot of things. That So it is truly an unfair comparison in this current day. Just like this. We, we just know that this scheduler got pooped up, farted out over Christmas break. So is it as good? Is it as battle-tested? Does it have edge cases? What is it missing? right? We don't know. And so therefore, this is cool, but I just don't know if it's something you should get terribly excited about. I think the reason why people are getting so like horned up about it is because it mentions Rust, but just because something mentions Rust. Like right away, your cackle should always go up when someone says one compiled language using the same compiler runs faster than some other compiled language using the same compiler. Or your cackle should go up when someone says JavaScript or language with garbage collector is as fast as C in some case. Again, you should go, cackle should go up and say, whatever I'm being shown is likely some level of deception going on or some trickeration of how the measurements are being made. Did I say cackles? Hackles? Your cackles can go up too. Your cockles of your heart can flare Donald Trump is as fast as Hussein Bolt under certain workloads. Exactly. You know, that's just, you know, when you really measure it, I I literally, Brussels, I feel like I just got done. I I literally just said this. I I just like, I mean, I literally just got done explaining. (laughs) I mean, if you're trying to see which one's faster, C or Zig or C++ or Rust, and the implementations are identical, it's coming down to how the translation going from the language into the compiled code is going, okay? Godbolt to compare them. Yeah, Godbolt. But then again, even with Godbolt, the problem is, is that more instructions does not mean slower. An unrolled loop can quadruple the amount of instructions in a small area, but it's significantly faster. And so it's just like, what are you going to do? Like, unless if you really know assembly, which I don't know assembly, I'm just not that person that's going to be able to understand it. I don't know if that's true either. See, like these statements, I just simply don't make because I think these statements aren't, they're not great statements to make. Sorry. I just don't, I just don't know. Right. Cause I can't, I, you can't objectively say that now it could be harder. Granted, it could be harder. Totally on, uh, totally on board that writing it in Rust could be way harder to accomplish, but to say that it's not possible, I don't, you know, like, you know what I mean? Uh, yeah, the average, com- the not even the average co- uh, programmer, the 99th percentile programmer will not write as good of code as a compiler. The 99.99 percentile, that 0.01 percent, still probably won't write it nearly as good. Casey would disagree. Yeah, Casey is is Casey would disagree with what? I'd be curious what Casey disagrees with because we agree with a lot of things. I'm pretty sure I've said nothing that Casey would disagree with, that programmers are almost always never good, as good as the compiler. I'm pretty sure Casey would agree with that, okay? you got to remember that a huge portion of programmers program JavaScript. Yes, Casey is not the 0.01% programmer. Casey is the 0.0... Casey is like one of five programmers. Okay, there's a big difference betwixt comparing Casey to randomly pick anybody on Twitter. Just randomly, right? You might hit John Carmack by accident, and John Carmack may not be great at assembly, right? Just because someone's a great programmer doesn't mean they're great at assembly, right? That Again, 
These these ideas. Where are you guys coming from? Casey Moratari. Casey Moratari. Great. First off, I love Casey. Casey is fantastic. Second off, he's really, really smart in his area, right? Like, you wouldn't want Casey making a UI. A, he'd probably get bored and he wouldn't want to do it anyways. But B, it's like there's some people that are really fast at it, that are really, really good at it. And that's what they do. You can, you can have specializations, okay? This does exist. Right? This does exist. That's all I have to say. You could probably, I mean, Casey could probably still make a great UI. He's, he's very, very talented. Randy, Randy's freaking amazing. Anyways, people, people, the point is just because somebody say something's faster and that somebody is extremely talented, just be careful accepting and regurgitating anything. Because when it comes to performance measurements, I would f- approach it as everybody is wrong before you approach it that everybody is right. Could Tom do it? I'm not even sure if Tom could do it. Okay? That's all I'm saying is most people aren't good at it. Yeah, you should only trust 5% of what I say. Okay? The name is only trust 5% of what I say, Jen. Okay? What about Tim? Nobody gives a damn about Tim. 